शांति मीक्षति Of 
Krishna, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. A pure soul is the eternal servant of God as his fragmental part and parcel. He comes in contact with Maya, illusion, due to the desire to lord it over Maya, and that is the cause of his many sufferings. As long as he is in contact with matter, he has to execute work in terms of material necessities. Krishna consciousness, however, brings one into spiritual life, even while one is within the jurisdiction of matter, for it is an arousing of spiritual existence by practice in the material world. The more one is advanced, the more he is free from the clutches of matter. The Lord is not partial towards anyone. Everything depends on one's practical performance of duties in Krishna consciousness, which in every respect helps one control the senses and conquer the influence of desire and anger. And one who stands fast in Krishna consciousness, controlling the above-mentioned passions, remains factually in the transcendental stage, or Brahma Nirvana. The Eightfold Yoga Mysticism is automatically practiced in Krishna consciousness because the ultimate purpose is served. There is a gradual process of elevation in the practice of Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Varana, Jnana, and Samadhi. But these only preface perfection by devotional service, which alone can award peace to the human being. It is the highest perfection of life. I'll send the box to purpose to the fifth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of Karma Yoga or Action in Krishna.
when things are getting tough in life, all we need to do is just step back and think of Krishna by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And just call out to Krishna, and Krishna says that he's there in his name, that he and his name are not different. So if we're chanting from the heart, we're chanting with feeling, with attention, then Krishna says, I'm there in that name. I'm there with you. And we can feel Krishna's presence in the holy names. And we can just uh, lie back in his arms and let us sweep us off our feet and transport us to that balcony seat. So that's the uh, magic of the Hare Krishna mantra. So in full Krishna consciousness, so then this is what that, these are the, the, um, the details. This is the fine print of what that means. So the first part is knowing Krishna to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities. So what does that mean for us? Which austerities and sacrifices are we performing? Sankirtan Yagya. Sankirtan Yagya. Okay. <laughs> so we're doing Sankirtan Yagya. We're chanting Japa, we're chanting Kirtan, we're trying to share Krishna consciousness with others, and through book distribution, through sound distribution, just talking to our friends and colleagues, co-workers and family. That's all Sankirtan Yagya. So we should do that for the pleasure of Krishna. What are some of our other sacrifices that we do? Waking up early. What's that? Waking up early. Waking up early. Okay, so devotees, we try to wake up early, right? Ideally before sunrise. <laughs> but definitely at least a little earlier than the rest of the world so we can kind of get a head start and check a few rounds at least before starting our day. So that's a big sacrifice. We're sacrificing our precious sleep, giving up our nice cozy beds. <laughs> And, you know, taking a shower, getting ready, and focusing on Krishna, giving up the, the first part of our day, the best part of our day, when everything is still clear in our minds, giving that part of the day to Krishna. That's a good way to uh, understand that Krishna is the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices. Okay, what else do we do? Taking prasadam. Taking prasadam. All right, so everybody needs to eat, right? We can't live without eating. So instead of just eating to enjoy our tongues and fill our bellies and enjoy new taste sensations, uh, we actually eat as a sacrifice to Krishna. Right? And Krishna also advises that. He says, Yat karoshi yat ashnasi, yat jagosi dadasi, yat tapasyasi komteya, tat karusva mad arpana. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that, osana kunti, as an offering unto me. So, yeah, so we offer before eating, well, first we select what we're going to prepare because we, we're cooking for Krishna. We're preparing something for Krishna. So we want to use ingredients and the, the Krishna lights that are acceptable to him, that are pleasing to him. Prepare things in a nice, clean way with, uh, with devotion uh, for the pleasure of Krishna. And then we offer it using the prescribed mantras. And then we take prasadam. So that's a really nice way that something we do every day that we can turn from an ordinary mundane activity into a sublime, sacred sacrifice to Krishna. Okay, what else? What's another austerity of sacrifice? Sacrifice and book distribution. What's that? Book distribution for syllabus. Book distribution. So book distribution is a part of the Sankirtan Yagya, that we should all go out and try to distribute books, right, as far as we can. Weekend warriors, or after work, or take some, always carry some books in your bag or your briefcase or whatever. If you're people that you meet during the day, they look. Ekadasi. 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 Okay, so giving up those grains and beans on the Kadasi and trying to increase our remembrance on Krishna. Yeah. And then even ordinary things that we do during the day, right? Like probably most of you have jobs, right? <laughs> you go to work, either you go to office or you go to place of work or you remotely. So that's also a sacrifice. Your work is a, it's a sacrifice. And so we can also do that as an offering to Krishna. So every morning when you're getting in your car, going to work, or you're clocking in at the office or something, then uh, you can say, uh, just be, uh, try to you know adjust your consciousness that I'm doing this for Krishna. And we're also doing it you know, to provide for our families. Uh, but they're also, we're trying to raise them in Krishna consciousness. So even if we don't work, if uh, mothers at home, for example, taking care of the house, taking care of children, that's also an offering to Krishna. 
because we're trying to raise them in Krishna consciousness, providing nice, nutritious prasadam, engaging them in activities, maybe if you have an altar at home, engaging the children in deity worship. So that way, everything that we do, everything in a devotee's life can connect uh, to Krishna. And, and, that, uh, and then we're doing this. They we're understanding that every sacrifice that we do, every austerity that we undertake, that Krishna is the beneficiary. That this is not for my enjoyment, but this is for Krishna. Everything for Krishna. And that's one third of the part of getting peace from the pangs of material mysteries. But the second part is knowing Krishna to be the Lord, the Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods. So here we are on planet Earth, and uh, sometimes we think that there are people in control of this planet, you know, like our political leaders, or you know, sometimes we think it's the media, or you know, there's people who have influence on other people that are kind of like you know, the influencers of human society. But actually, there's one person in control here, and that's Krishna. <laughs> so, and he's even controlling those people. Nothing is happening without Krishna's sanction. So if we understand that, there, that the supreme controller is Krishna, then, and that we're devotees of Krishna, and this also ties in with the next thing. Uh, the next thing is understanding that Krishna is our benefactor and well-wisher of, of all living entities. So if we understand that the person who is actually in control of everything that goes on on this planet, not even this planet, but every planet in the universe, is also simultaneously our best friend and well-wisher, then what do we have to worry about, right? Something, you may have a friend who has like a high position in society that you get something valuable from, right? Or a friend who's very wealthy, that you don't have to worry about financial trouble because you know that this friend or family member is going to bail you out if you have any trouble. So then you don't have anxiety, you don't have financial anxiety. Or you know, you just you know that you've got a friend in high places, things are going to be smooth. You, there's help, you've got it, you're connected, right? So Krishna is in the highest place. He's the supreme personality of Godhead. So if, if we really know and have faith in that fact, transcendental fact that Krishna is our best friend, then Everything's going to be smooth. We don't need to worry. Krishna's got our back. He's looking out for us. He's constantly observing our every detail of our lives. He knows. He's in our hearts. He knows what we want. He knows what we think. He knows what we feel. He knows where we're going. He knows where we need to go. And he knows the next steps that we need to take. And he knows how to make it happen. And he does make it happen. And all we need to do is just remember him and uh, uh, allow him to, and not get in the way, basically, <laughs> not obstruct it, not block what Krishna is trying to do in our lives, and just kind of like really be very Krishna conscious, and then be a little flexible and just kind of go with Krishna's flow. <laughs> if we go with Krishna's flow, then you know where that flow is going to take us? Back to Godhead. Back to Godhead. <laughs> That's all we need to do, is just kind of like let Krishna guide us. So uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be any um, anxieties in a devotee's life, but there won't be any material miseries. So he says, we get peace from the pangs of material miseries. Uh, so in spiritual life, as devotees know, there are also anxieties. <laughs> I'm sure the teachers that were organizing the Sunday school performances were in a little anxiety, you know, that the children show up and they're on time, that they know what they're supposed to do and that they're going to get it right. So, but that's different because that kind of anxiety doesn't bring suffering. It brings transcendental bliss. Because anything that's done for Krishna, even though there may be a little bit of anxiety or pressure, or anyone who's a manager, right, like Dronacharya Prabhu, I'm sure you have a lot of anxiety, Balabhaja Prabhu, I know you're sure you experience a lot of anxiety in your sense of Prabhupada. But how, how does it feel? Is it something that makes you depressed and, you know, wanting to give up? No, it, it's like it, it impels you. It makes you want to improve and work harder and rally your forces and, you know, it's inspiring. It keeps us on our toes, basically. And it makes us call out to Krishna. It basically makes us more Krishna conscious. And so it makes us more free from the actual miseries of life. So those spiritual anxieties actually help us to become free from the material anxieties, which are the real nasty ones. So this is the, um, the, uh, the gist of this verse here. That we just need to try to connect everything to Krishna. Remember Krishna, remember his position, remember that he's our best friend. He's always there for us. We've always got someone to turn to uh, who can really help us. 
Because sometimes we turn to friends or family in this world thinking that they're going to help us, and they often are helpless themselves. But Krishna is never helpless. He is always right there and knows just what to do. He's the expert judge of time, place, and circumstances. So he knows the exact time to do it. He knows what to do, how to do it, and he'll do it at the perfect time. Which may not be our timing, right? Sometimes we pray to Krishna. We ask him, please, Krishna, I need this for my service, or please help me in this way. I have difficulty. And uh, and we're thinking, Krishna, you know, if he doesn't respond within 24 hours, then, oh, you're not God. Then. <laughs> Sometimes we're like that, right? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, but Krishna does things in his time, and he knows best. We have to think that Krishna knows best. And we just need to be patient. That's what Prabhu Goswami says in the Bhagavad so these six things that are very favorable for favorable for devotional service is being enthusiastic to serve Krishna, uh, being confident that Krishna will be merciful, Krishna will help, Krishna is God, He is there for me, He is my best friend, it is going to be great in the end, even if it's not now. And then being patient. Just being patient and trusting that Krishna will do everything in uh, the proper time. And then, of course, following regular principles, hearing, chanting, remembering Krishna, associating with devotees, doing service wherever we can, uh, giving up the association of non devotees, associating with devotees, making friendship with devotees, being a part of the devotee community, being engaged in the devotee, devotee community, contributing whatever you can whether it's through you know, financial donations, whether it's through physical, you know, get in there, roll up your sleeves and do some service, or you know, inviting other people to the temple, or just being here and being a part of the community. And those are those are principles. And then what's the last one? Janasanga and Satovite. Satovite. Aye, those are both two things. Janasanga means giving up the association of non-devotees, and Satovite means accepting the association of devotees. Because we need community. Human beings are social beings, we need friends. And so we should um, really try to make friends with the devotees. The devotees have big hearts, they're very sweet. And the wonderful thing about devotees is the longer you stay in Krishna consciousness, the sweeter you get. I was saying this to a friend the other day because she, uh, there was a, a senior devotee who was giving out a talk. And then uh, I was saying, I was reflecting that, oh, yeah, it's just, he's, so, it's such a sweet, he's such a sweet devotee. And she said, it wasn't always. <laughs> 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 he was older, she was a senior devotee. I've been around a bit longer. And, um, and I said, well, the wonderful thing about Krishna consciousness is it's just a matter of time. Everyone will be sweet in the end. <laughs> because Krishna is sweet. Right? There's that song, Madharam, Madharam. That he's the emperor of sweetness. And so the more we associate with Krishna by serving him, by chanting his names, by thinking of him, Taking Krishna Prasadam, all these things just melt the heart and uh, awaken our actual nature, which is sweet. Because we're parts and parcels of Krishna. So our nature is also Krishna's nature. Krishna's eternal, we're eternal. Krishna's full of knowledge, we're full of knowledge. Krishna's blissful, we're blissful. Krishna's sweet, we're sweet. Because we're parts and parcels of Krishna. Only that Krishna is infinite and you know the greatest, and we're tiny little ones, ten thousand size of the tip of the hair. He's like the ocean, we're like a little drop of water. But qualitatively, the drop of water, if you analyze it under a microscope and you know, do a chemical analysis, the, the, the chemical composition of the drop is the same as the ocean, the so, yeah. so all the good qualities automatically develop in the personality of the devotee in the course of time. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, our project, Krishna House, or Krishna House in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, it's been going on uh, under the very expert direction of um, His Grace Kali Guru since 2008. When he arrived at the temple, it was like not much happening. There were maybe five devotees, and two of them were himself and his wife. <laughs> and then three year older devotees that were just kind of like trying to, you know, come to the morning program and chant the rounds. And, uh, and he just, uh, you know, went in there and uh, the deities of Shishi Gornitai were there and he thought, uh, well, they were, they were trying to uh, 
make new devotees, but nobody was coming for a long time. And then he finally uh, had this realization that, well, if a new person did come, because there's a huge university there, University of Florida has 40,000 students. He said, you might have students joining. Somebody must be interested in spiritual life. And then he thought, well, if somebody did want to join, what would we do with them? Because there was no space. There were no rooms. There was no ashram. They had some uh, house that they were renting out just you know, to kind of like get a little income to pay the bills and stuff. He's like, well, if somebody did join, we, we don't have a, a place for them to stay. We don't have anyone to take care of them because nobody was living in the town. They didn't have like an ashram meter. So you see, maybe that's why no one's joining because Krishna sees that we're not ready to receive anybody. So then what he did was when the, the lease finished on a, one of the, on the apartments in the house, those students left and he remodeled the house, made beautiful rooms, bathrooms, everything for, you know, nice for a devotee off. And then uh, he got a, a, a senior devotee, enthusiastic, well not a sen an enthusiastic young person who was, you know, mature, fixed up devotee to be an ashram leader. And then he was just praying every day to the deities of Gorni Thai. Dear Gorni Thai, if you send some new people, we promise to take care of them. He was making that prayer. And then as soon, like literally within days of those rooms being ready and the ashram leader being there and submitting that sincere prayer, some new people started coming. Like within the week, um, Amrita Gailey came and she's an amazing devotee now. And then uh, someone else came, I can't remember the name. But like there were three devotees that came within the first two weeks. And they were just like, this is amazing, we want to do this. And it's like, okay. Uh, would you like to stay? We have rooms, and here's the ashram leader, and they're like, yup, sign me up, they moved in. And then they just, you know, started going to the morning program, and studying Bhagavad Gita, and going out and distributing prasadam on campus, doing kirtan, and, you know, all this basic Krishna consciousness. And then that attracted more people, and more people, they bought another house, and more rooms, and so now they have uh, five houses there, and they can accommodate around uh, 30 devotees. And I've been there for four years, and since I've been there, the ashram is always full. And the devotees are coming and going. So usually, uh, you know, people will come, uh, new people will come in, brand new people, who, you know, don't know, you know, whether to turn left or right <laughs> to get to Krishna. And they just kind of show up, right? Like Trish. Trish is Patricia here in the red side. <laughs> she was born and raised in Gainesville, Florida. And uh, yeah, one day she just, showed up at one of our kirtan programs, and uh, she loved it, you know, she was a natural, and she was just like, how can I get more involved in this? And then, so at that time, Kameshi was the ashram leader, and it was in the middle of the pandemic, actually, it was in 2020, she was one of our pandemic babies. <laughs> and uh, so the interesting thing was, she was so sincere that, because, uh, our morning program was closed, our evening classes were closed also, but she was so sincere she wanted to move in, but she couldn't really associate with the devotees. She was in a quarantine ashram. We had our one ashram that was just like for quarantine people, devotees who would travel and then come back or something. So she was like stuck in there totally alone for like, what, a week, 10 days? Yeah, about a week. An enormously long time. And then finally, you know, she tested uh, negative and then she could come up. But it's just like, it was kind of like a hazing, you know, like <laughs> you can tolerate a week of quarantine ashram. But um, yeah, now she's been chanting 16 rounds for, what, two years or something? Super enthusiastic devotee, she's uh, ready for initiation, and uh, now she's uh, come on our traveling sankirtan party, so we have this nice um, uh, Goranga girls traveling sankirtan party, that there's five of us. This is the second year of women's Vaishnavis traveling Sankirtan party uh, from Gainesville, going all the way from Florida. This year we're working our way up to Toronto, Canada, and then back down, and distributing books on the way, doing Harinams, and uh, just visiting temples and uh, getting to know devotees, and making friends and making contacts. And yeah, so. I want to um, invite each of the girls here to share a little thought or realization about the experience of um, travel Sankirtan so far. If that's okay? Anyone want to go first? Amrita, come here. Amrita is actually the leader of this Traveling Sankirtan party because she was um, she was the 
one of the pillars of it last year. And so now she's our fearless leader. So you want to house the night? So this morning, Prabhupada Grimanti Jishri asked us to speak on Sankirtan. And the first um, word that came to my mind was duty. You know? it, <laughs> the first word that came to my mind was duty. I thought of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and how he, he instructed us to anyone or every, anyone that we meet just to call that about Krishna's instructions, Krishna's words, and how they do that. And it feels like that, you know? We have so many duties, you know? we have so many responsibilities with either our daughter or our sister or you know, our, a wife or a husband. You know, we have all these relations and we have particular duties in these relationships. Similarly, I was thinking that we have this relationship with Krishna that we have transcendental loving relationship with Krishna. And so we have a duty in that relationship also. And that duty is you know, to, to be Krishna conscious and, and to share that with others. And it's quite simple. Um, and it's, so when we go out on the streets, it's very satisfying to the heart because it feels like you know, we're doing our, our dharma, our duty. Yes. So these are these are our team members. My name was Amrita, I didn't say it. This is Janaki and she Hi Krishna. <laughs> My name is Janaki. And uh, yeah, there, whenever Prabhupada Priya asked us to share these realizations, there were two things that came to my mind. And the first thing uh, I was thinking was that Every day we chant almost two hours or longer. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, over and over and over. And we're asking, please use me, please engage me, please give me service. Over and over and over. We're begging for it. But like, are we begging from the heart? That's the real question. And one thing that I realized is that Sankirtan is not, if you want to be an instrument, if you want to uh, really like be used in whatever way, hands up, Jopani style go out to the streets, try to talk to a stranger, try to give them Krishna consciousness. <laughs> it's like really like just the most authentic way to, to be an instrument. And then the second thing that I thought also was, actually we came from DC um, before we got to Philadelphia. And uh, DC was very hard. Uh, the people were very, very tough. <laughs> they, were, they were very much like, I gotta go, sorry, I'm with my family. Can't talk. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> and uh, but then when we got to Philly, the people were much nicer here. They're much more open and uh, receiving. Um, but still, there's a little bit of like hesitancy. And uh, and I found, especially yesterday, we went out for like like six hours or something. We were out there for a really long time, and it was we couldn't stop really. Um, but when we were out there, I noticed that every time somebody said no. It's not that I was just like, hey, do you like yoga meditation? No, okay, bye. It was like, I really made an effort to uh, try to just connect with them. And my realization was that people are very thirsty, actually, for personal connection. And even just like a very simple, just one-on-one, -on -one, like mundane connection, they're thirsty for that. They're not getting that in their real life. But on a spiritual level, coming from devotees, you know, in the mercy of Shri Prabhupada, like, them being able to connect this higher, higher connection actually satisfies them. And what, so they were saying no, and I was like, okay, whatever, don't take the book, that's fine, but tell me about you. Like, what do you, you live here, you work, what do you do? And it wasn't until then that at the end, they, probably like 75% of the people, I didn't even have to ask for the donation. They were like, um, do you want money? Dude, what do you want? <laughs> what are you doing out here? And they took books. 
that was the thing that they were they were satisfied and they felt that uh, reciprocation. They were looking for it actually. Uh, so this is Kameshi. She's awesome. <laughs> Hi, Krishna. My name is Kameshi Devdasi. So, I also was meditating about the question probably asked this morning. And for me, uh, it's my first time I'm coming in travel in Sankirtan. And I get a few realizations, but one is like Janaki was mentioned, is a connection with the result is transcendental bliss and the shikshataka, like the Lord Chaitanya prayers in the morning we chant the first verse is Ananda, is Ananda Budi Vartana is trust and then, then please increase so when we do in Sankirtan I feel like it's not just beneficial for our spiritual life it's also beneficial for others because we share the knowledge we have with others and when we share it it shows like the love we have for other human entity and also for Shia Prabhupada. So it's very beautiful and my experience yesterday I was I was receiving a lot of no's from many for many people. I was like I, I tried to approach people and like no no. But just one girl, I stopped one, this beautiful and amazing soul. And we talk for like 20 minutes. And then the interaction and the connection we have with each other was so deep. They made my day so, I was so happy all day. I was like, I feel satisfied, like Janaki was mentioned. Sankirtan just increases satisfaction in our spiritual life. So I encourage everybody to try. Try one day to give one book to someone. And then you can experience for yourself the satisfaction is commonly naturally in your heart and the appreciation for Shia Prabhupada because Shia Prabhupada put everything for us and they give his life for us. So it's kind of like be grateful for that. So I really want to encourage everybody, just try. You can do it, no worry. Everybody can do it, you just need to have the determination and the pure desire to share this knowledge with everyone. Thank you. Hi, Isma. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Gandhi. This is quick. Oh, my name is Trisha. Um, I also was meditating on this question and probably asked us to speak on it. One of my uh, deepest realizations was that if we are acting for Krishna's pleasure, not for our own pleasure, then we can we can really make ourselves open to be that instrument that people need and we're so much more satisfied by that because as spirit souls we hear this all the time where our constitutional position is to serve others not ourselves especially when we're serving the supreme one and i also like what Prabhupada priya mentioned about um about how when things go like ways we're not expecting you know um, like Krishna, Krishna's in control of that too. So I've had experiences, like me and Amrita had an experience where we couldn't find a parking spot anywhere where we were supposed to. And so we parked somewhere random. And you know, we were kind of like, okay, this place doesn't have so many people, but we went out anyways. We made our hearts open to be that instrument. And we only met like a few people that day. We, don't, we didn't get too many books out, but there was a few people, specifically one person that was just so, Right, you know, we do that phrase like a right mango, the right thing to be thinking of the tree. Like, th this person was so right, and I just felt like Krishna is so personal and so loving and so caring for each and every soul that He sent us all the way, like way out of the way, for one person to get the book that they needed. Because this one person was ready. Out of all the people in, in DC, that's where we were at the time, out of all the people in DC, all the people in the United States, all the people in the world, He sent us to this one soul to give them a book. Because the soul was ready. The soul had the philosophy like down already. It was amazing. And it, and it just, I mean, it reminds me of my own like journey, you know, how Christian made me feel like I was special enough to, to have these amazing experiences that brought me like, oh, okay, wow, this lined up perfectly. I think this is the path for me, you know? He's so personal with each and every one of us. So to remember that and to, and to be that instrument for someone else, be that instrument of Christian's personalism.